Algebra two, illustrative math, algebra two, unit five, lesson seven is called expressing transformations of functions algebraically. Okay, so our goal today is I can write an equation from a description of how the graph is transformed. So here's some transformation rules that we've used. Um, I've, I put them in a nice little organized chart here. Um, a shift is also known as a translation. So make sure you know um, if it says shift, that's also a translation. Same thing here. Okay. Um, reflections and um, these are the rules. This is what happens on the graph. This is what happens in your equation. And then this is um, changes in your table. Now here's the the notation in terms of your function, we're going to be using a little bit of, of, uh, of this notation today. All right, so the first thing is g of x equals the square root of x. Complete each table. Be prepared to explain your reasoning. So if I want to translate 5 left, it's going to be g of x plus 5. Okay, so basically I'm replacing the x with x plus 5, so my expression is going to be the square root of x plus 5. Now this one, they give us the expression and the word, so you could do it either way. If we're going to go 5 left, it's going to be the same thing here, the x plus 5, g of x plus 5, and then down 3 would mean you'd have to subtract 3. Now this time they change the sign of x, so this is going to basically be a reflection across the y-axis. Now, if you can't remember when it's x, when it's y, think about here. Here's your y-axis, here's your x-axis. So if I, get, if I have a point here, let's say this point is 1, 1. If I reflect across the x-axis over here, it becomes negative 1, 1 you changed the sign of x just like you did here. You went from g of x to g of negative x, okay? So here your x's change signs. So 5 left is x plus 5, down 3. And then if I want to reflect across the y-axis, so reflect across the y-axis. We kind of did that here. It's kind of like combining all three of these into one. We need to change the sign of x. Now, a lot of people will do this. They'll say g of negative x plus 5 like that. But that's actually wrong. Because um, you, you, you're doing multiple transformations, you got to kind of keep them separate here. So you're going to need to put a parenthesis here. So then it's negative x plus 5. You're changing the sign of your input, okay? But you're also moving left 5, so you got to have the plus 5 minus 3. So that would be the square root of negative parentheses x plus 5 minus 3, okay? So this time, new function. They're giving us the transformations. So left 3 up 5. So this is g of x is what they said to use. So we're going to go left, 3 left. So it's going to be x plus 3 squared. And then up 5 means you add 5. Okay, so in other words, it's f of x plus 3 plus 5. So where's your vertex? Well, think about it. If, if this is your... This is x squared. It would be a parabola centered at the origin. If I move this thing left 3 up 5, my vertex is going to be right there at negative 3, 5. Okay, so how do I know that? I know that because I, I shifted left 3 and... Up five, so my vertex goes from zero zero up there. All right, next one. 
write an equation for a quadratic function h whose graph has a vertex. So it's kind of the same thing, except instead of telling us the translation, it tells us where the vertex is. So this thing here is going to go right 1.5 and up 2.6. So it's going to be it's going to be x minus 1.5 squared and then plus 2.6. This time if it opens downward, this means I reflect across the x-axis. So that means I, for that one I do f of x goes to negative f of x. Um, and this is going to go right 3.2 down 4.7. So my function is going to be negative. And then I got to multiply my whole function by a negative. So it's going to be x minus 3.2 squared minus 4.7. Now, I would probably distribute this negative, so I'm going to get negative oops, x minus 3.2 squared and then plus 4.7. So that would be my final answer there for that one. All right, so in an earlier lesson, we looked at the temperature T in degrees Fahrenheit of a bottle of soda water left outside for H hours. Let's model this data with a function. This time we're going to start with this function. So that's the blue graph down there below. Um, in your book, if you have a book, um, <clears throat> you probably have two separate graphs. You have the function on the right, and then you have the data on the left. I kind of plotted the data here, and then I drew... I put my function on the same graph. So describe a translation of this graph that fits the data. <clears throat> so um, let's see here. I'm going to say, obviously, it needs to go up. My y-intercept needs to get up to here. Okay, and then if I move it, let's see here. If I move it a little bit, that would be good. So I'm going to pick this point. This point's at 0, 0.33. I, th I think I need to move it up here, right about there. So right, or you know what would be helpful if I, all right, let's see here. So up, actually right about there. So it looks like I'm going to go up and left. So this, and it's kind of hard to tell because it's off the graph, but I, let's say I get up to 80 because 70 is here. So I start at 33. So 80 minus 33 would mean I went up 47. So I'm going to say up 47. And then I had to move left one. So I'm going to say left about one because one, I moved it right about here. Okay. So here's my transfer translation. So I guess I could put it up here. Up 47 left one. So write an equation here. So, so you're going to have to take your original function, f of h, and that's going to go to f of h plus 1 plus 47. So what would that be? It would be, I'll call it g of h. So I'm going to replace my h with h plus 1. And then if I want to go up 47, I just add 47 on there. Okay. <clears throat> so that would be for number 2. This was number 1. All right, last thing. What does the function tell you about the temperature outside? Okay, so I'll put it right here. Um, let's see here. I would say it looks like the, the graph kind of like levels off right here at like 45. Okay, do you see how it levels off? That's called a horizontal asymptote. 
I would say the graph appears to have a horizontal asymptote at 45 degrees. So it makes me think that the temperature outside is 45 degrees. Okay, so if you think about the situation, your can of Coke is outside, your can of soda is outside, and, and it's going to get colder and colder and colder. And eventually, the soda will be the temperature that it is outside. So that's kind of why it's leveling off like that. All right, so our lesson synthesis. So far, we learned how to translate and reflect functions, both horizontally and vertically. For each function displayed, be prepared to describe how the graph is a sequence of translations and reflections of the simpler function. So I guess the simpler function here would be, would just be e to the x. Okay, so if I change the sign of x, and again, you can go back and look at that first slide that I had. Um, change the sign of x, that's going to be reflection across y-axis. And then the plus 5 means it's going to translate up 5. Okay, so let's see here. When I go to the next one, your simpler function, your most basic function, would just be x squared. Um, let's see here. The negative on the outside is going to be a reflection across the x-axis. And then the minus 3 on the inside means it's going to translate right 3. Now this one's a little tricky because you, you technically got to get this factor here. Um, what you really want to do is change this to negative x minus 2. So this is my function. Now my most basic one would be y equals x cubed. So from there, what's happening here? Well, um, let's see here. The negative on the outside, on the, well, it's on the inside of the cubed. It's on the outside here. This negative, that tells me I'm reflecting across the y-axis. The minus 2 on the inside means it's going to translate right 2. And then the minus 6 on the outside is translate down 6. All right, so our goal, I can write an equation from a description of how a graph is transformed. Go back to that first slide and... Um, I guess my second slide and check the uh, the rules that those would be very helpful. All right, and last thing, for any equation for the function g whose graph is the graph f of t, translated right five and up fifty. So, right five. So we're going to basically we're going to take f of t, and that's going to go to f of t minus five, and then the up fifty means you add fifty on. So. Call it g of t, negative 100 times 1.05. So I replace t with t minus 5, and then I add 50 on. Okay, so if you graphed this function g of t and graph the original f of t, it would look like it did these transformations. All right, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.